Hello, my name is Ryan. Some of you know me as John Doe, right here in Tokyo, Japan. Now, apparently it has come to light that in Fukushima Prefecture, by way of the Institute of Radiological Services, over 16,000 people who were surveyed uh, among a roughly 420,000 people um, are found to be uh, incorrectly estimated on their actual radiation exposure in Fukushima Prefecture. Now, 12,000 people, over 12,000 people, excuse me, have been found to have been exposed to a higher doses than originally estimated, and over 3,000 people uh, apparently received lower doses than originally estimated. Now, like I said, this is coming from uh, a r roughly 420,000 people who have been surveyed and, and data compiled so far. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, I bring this up because basically what we are seeing here is extreme incompetence on a part of those who are compiling this data on the uh, part of the nuclear industry in Japan and all of that. Now some people may want to go conspiracy theory on this and say this is done on purpose. This is done as a way to cover up data and keep people cool at the moment and all that. But you have to remember what they're trying to do here is compile data for people who are exposed I believe from the point of March 2011 when everything started up until I believe like a few months after. So they've been interviewing people extensively trying to find this data. And what we found is that there's been, like I said, an extreme amount of basic incompetence here. Now why did this incompetence happen? Well, it's pretty clear it's, it's, it's corporatism, all right? Corporatism always leads to this high amount of incompetence, right? Uh, where people just fill out paperwork and people, people are not really connected to the issue or the problem they're dealing with and they just go through the process and go through the numbers and as we see here, I produce false data. Now, luckily, the Nuclear Regulatory Agency in Japan, the newly formed one now, has a much more independent stance on things so they can pressure the nuclear industry and different um, academic institutions to admit things when well, things are done wrong. So while this looks kind of bad that this type of massive screw-up has happened, it's actually kind of a positive because at least when these type of uh, screw-ups are made and, uh, and extremely affect people's lives and they extremely affect public perception of things, it can be found out, exposed, and admitted to. Now, how does this affect actually people who got these incorrect numbers? Well, number one, of course it does emotional damage, all right, because you thought you were okay and then you're not okay, all right? Now, the people who actually had higher doses than expected are actually going over the actual limit for annual exposure of what the government, Japanese government has said is safe. So these people who thought they got lower doses than originally estimated now find themselves in a situation where they were exposed to a lot more radiation than they originally thought. So while they try to, while the government here in Japan tries to say that certain areas are safe and it's okay to go back to and try to get people to repopulate these areas where they really shouldn't be repopulating these areas, these people originally thought that they were not exposed to as much radiation as they thought as they previously thought they were, now have to rethink their relocation plans and need to rethink what they're going to do. So this has wrecked people's lives, you know, this type of mistake. So let's not go conspiracy theory on this, okay? Let's be a bit more material and look at this as extreme incompetence by way of corporatism and by way of bureaucracy and by way of people just um, thinking they can just fill out some paperwork and just do their so-called job and everything's fine.
but it's not fine. When you make these kind of mistakes, you seriously affect people's lives, and you have a serious impact on plans and organization of where to go forward. So, of course, guys, leave comments in the comment box below. If you want to leave a video response, those are always welcomed as well. And if you have not subscribed to this channel yet, please do, because you'll get lots of interesting videos just like this one. And, of course, spread this video around if you feel so froggy. Until next time, it's me, Ryan, here in Japan. Checking out.